it's Colleen with Rope and Resellers, and I'm back from Japan. I had some technical difficulties getting video uploaded from Japan, from my phone, on my computer, so uh, I definitely have to work on that next time I leave the country, which won't be for a while, because Japan is not cheap. Anyway, I'm back, and I am going to do a video on the items that I sold while I was on vacation, so let's go find out. So I sold 23 things while I was gone, and instead of going through 23 things, because a lot of it's bread and butter, I'm just going to pick 10 things to show you guys that either sold quickly or were kind of unique items. So first up, I have the Buckle jeans that were Sabrina. The nice thing about Buckle, BKE, they're a mall brand, but each and every uh, pair of jeans has the name in it. So it's really easy to identify to see if these are fast sellers or not. And these sold pretty fast, so they sold in two weeks. Uh, I got $19.99 for them. $26.54 is what I collected, so they paid for shipping. I paid a dollar for these at a thrift store. $9.85 for eBay and PayPal fees as well as shipping. For a total profit of, profit of $15.69, and they took two weeks to sell. This is a group of basic readers, and um, this came out of a big lot that I had from an auction, and there's a bunch more books that I have up for sale, but these in particular sold pretty fast. I think people get nostalgic, and they use them for homeschooling, so anyway, they sold for $19.99. I collected $19.99, so I paid shipping. They were able to go media mail, so they really didn't cost very much for shipping, $1.50 is about what I paid for this. $9.75 in shipping and fees for a total profit of $8.74, and it only took a month to sell. I find those books pretty easy to sell. This was a, a shirt that actually came out of my husband's collection. I believe I bought this at the Patagonia outlet um, a while ago, and he never wore it, and he handed it to me, so I sold it for $24.99 with free shipping. I didn't pay anything for it. I mean, he got his use out of it. Six sixty-five for shipping and fees for total profit of eighteen thirty-four, and it took a month to sell. This actually took a long time to sell. This is a little marionette that I picked up at an auction, but I got it relatively inexpensive. I've had a couple people ask me just for the stand. They didn't want the horse, and I didn't want to to break up the lot because I thought that that added value to the whole lot. So anyway, it sold. Uh, somebody offered me $55 when I was in Japan, and I, of course, took it because I was all about making money since I was spending money like water over there. Eighty-seven, eighty-seven is what I collected, so they paid shipping. I paid $5.50 for this at the auction, so it was a good ROI um, because the cost of goods was so low. Twenty-six nineteen for shipping and fees for a total profit of fifty-six eighteen. Looks like maybe I overcharged on shipping, but um, anyway. So it took a year and nine months to sell. It was a slow mover. It was really cool, but it did have some condition issues. It was missing its ears, and I'm not sure all of the mane was intact and the tail was pretty skimpy. But anyway, it it's. It's out of here, and it took a year and nine months to sell. These are some um, Renault sunglasses. Sold for $24.99. I collected $27.91. I paid a dollar for them, and I do believe I got them at an estate sale for a buck. Uh, $6.64 for shipping and fees for a total profit of $20.47. They took three months to sell. They were so cool. Here's a quick picture. Just for your enjoyment. This I picked up fairly recently at an estate sale. It was this cute little tiger leopard thing, but it was signed by the uh, artist, so that's always a bonus and you have something to go off of. It sold for $24.99. I collected $29.09. I spent $3 on this at an estate sale. $7.15 for shipping and fees for total profit of $18.94, but it only took two weeks to sell. And I do have another one that's still up. 
This is um, a bunch of fabric I had bought for um, making clothes for my kids, and they are all too old for this color scheme at this point, so I decided to let it go. It sold for $24.99 uh, with free shipping. I figure it didn't really, I mean, it, it did cost me something back in the day, but I don't know. It's not worth it. $9.96 for shipping and fees for a total profit of $15.03. So that was about $7.50 a yard, and I know I didn't spend that much on it, and it took 10 months to sell. This is a vintage West Clock uh, travel alarm clock. These things are really cool, and uh, maybe I was thinking Doomsdayers like them because it doesn't take any kind of battery. It's a winding unit. It sold for $14.99, which isn't a ton of money. Actually, I think someone offered me ten dollars and like I said when I was in Japan if someone was offering me something that was more than half of what I was asking for it I just took it so anyway uh, somebody offered me ten dollars paid a dollar for it at a thrift store 443 in shipping and fees for a total profit of 457 so the profit wasn't super great but it only took three months to sell and it's out of here and I won't buy those anymore so there's a dud for you uh, Sony weather radio alarm or a radio clock. Uh, not all weather radios do well. As I found out this weekend, I bought one at a rummage sale and it's only worth like 10 bucks, but this one is worth quite a bit. This had TV on it, but of course now we've switched to digital signals. And so the TV part of this doesn't work anymore. And I did disclose that. Uh, I think I had to clean this up a bit, but it cleaned up pretty well. Uh, $44.99 is what it sold for. I collected $52.09, so they paid shipping. Spent $3 for this at a Goodwill. $11.92 for shipping and fees for a total profit of $37.17. And it only took a month to sell. This is a very popular item. You can see people pretty much just love it. That's I'm starting to see some, some assistance in quick turnaround and sales with those rating systems. The last thing I'm going to show you is this uh, vintage Reebok waste pack. It was it was kind of fun. Um, just silly thing I picked up at the thrift store not too long ago. $24.99 is what it sold for. $0.25 cents is what I paid for it at a thrift store. I think this went overseas. I want to say it went to Canada. Or Europe, one of the two. Anyway, six. No, must have. Maybe it didn't. Oh, you know what it did? It went to Kentucky. That's what it was. So it went to Kentucky. I don't know where it ended up going. I think England. Uh, so six thirty-five shipping and fees for a total profit of eighteen thirty-nine, and it took one month to sell. Pick up those fanny packs, people. There, especially the vintage one. Reebok, not so much. Nike does well. Okay, so looking at the numbers, I sold 23 items, and this was from, I left on the 14th of April, and we came back on the 1st of May. So, uh, it's not quite what I normally would make. You know, I always shoot for $200 profit a week, but let's just take a look. This isn't bad money for not shipping, not listing, and uh, vacation mode was in... Uh, email and a banner at the top so it you could still buy stuff 521.34 I collected 618.40 cost of goods 27.25 shipping and fees total 205.19 for a total profit of a little over two weeks 385.96 Amazon merch I have about now I only have about 150 160 up a lot of stuff's been falling off. I haven't been, I didn't put a lot of time or effort into it while I was gone. 21 shirts sold for total profit of 81.11. So my whole e-commerce adventure while I was on vacation, I made $467.07. Okay, so putting my store on vacation when I leave, I'll just run you through it really quick. I go down to selling tools in Seller Hub, vacation settings, and it takes me to this page. So I turn on the out of office email response. And so basically said, I'm out of office from April 14th to May 2nd. Thank you for your patience. 
So that gets sent to them when they buy something in vacation settings. I turn them on and all it does is create a message that people will see when they visit the store and I'll say the same thing basically. Okay, so that goes at a banner at the top of your listing. So when they look at it, they know the seller's currently away. When people look at your listing, we'll show them this message. Um, show people the date you'll be back. So a return date, I can just say the 7th. Um, now this is the part that people get confused. This you click on if you don't want anyone to buy anything. They can still buy it if they're watching it. So it's not 100% foolproof, but I will show you how I do it. I don't keep people from buying things. I just have that banner at the top that basically says the seller's away until May 2nd, and then they receive an email if they actually are going to buy something. So the last thing you need to do, so it's a two-step process. One is to turn on the vacation mode, but don't turn on the radio button that says that they can't buy things. The other thing is you need to go into your active listings. You highlight all. So if you go by the action button and press that, it'll do all, and then you do edit. Edit listings one through 500. It'll send you to bulk listing, and then you can edit that. It takes a few minutes, but it really isn't very long, and you can highlight it, and you can change handling time. So that's under the edit fields, and change handling time is right here. So no change, I have them change to, and then you just select your handling time. So however long you're going to be gone. If you're going to be gone more than 30 days, uh, I've never done that, so I can't really help you there. But uh, I did mine for 15 business days, and as time wore on, I did 10 and then 5 and then just brought it down. Right now I have it at 1. And that's it. And then you go through and you do however many listings you have and you are good to go. Submit changes. Confirm and submit. And boom, you're done. You're on vacation. So it's really pretty easy and then you just reverse the process when you get home. Turn off vacation settings and change your handling time to one day or whatever you normally do. So it's really easy and doesn't take very long at all. You kind of have to pay attention while you're on the road if you have access to your computer. It is not easy to do it on your phone because you actually have to go to the eBay Classic site. So I have done that before because I didn't want to travel with my computer. And it's a lot harder uh, just because it's so difficult to see on a tiny screen. I suppose if you had an iPhone Plus, one of the bigger phablets, then you would be able to do it a little bit easier. but. For me, it's just easier to always bring my computer, and it was no big deal traveling in Japan with, with my computer at all. So I was able to answer emails and take care of eBay and all that. So I have some video from a flea market that I went to in Kyoto, Japan, and I am working on editing that with my son. He was so kind as to video edit and uh, film while I was there, so I could focus on actually shopping. <clears throat> I did not get very much time. I could have spent all day there and of course I had the rest of my family and my husband's friends who were not all that interested in being at a flea market all day so uh, my time was limited but it was super fun. I found some really fun things and I'll show you in a video what I actually bought. Not very much because it had to come home on the luggage with me but uh, I'm, I'm pretty psyched. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for being patient. I should have a couple more videos coming up this week. I'll do a video on what sold last week, maybe later in the week, and then I will also upload that video from the flea market from Japan. So hope you guys are having good sales. If you go on vacation, don't forget about vacation mode. Just sell while you're gone. Make money while you're gone. It's kind of like having a paid vacation. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. If you like what you see, give it a subscribe or a thumbs up, thumbs down if you don't like it, and we'll see you soon.